Hello everyone, this is Salar and you are watching Smart Code. This is our tutorial number 23 on JavaScript and this tutorial is different. It is different in a sense we will try to put things together. As you know, we have learned so many concepts like variables creation, data types, number conversions, concatenations and so on. So now you have enough knowledge to develop simple applications. And that is the only reason we learn programming. We want to solve problems. We want to develop applications and we want to get something done, right? So in this tutorial, you will see many concepts in action, which we have already covered in our previous tutorials. So what we are going to do is we will try to develop a simple calculator application. In the application, I'm using prompt method. A prompt method in JavaScript is used to create input dialog box that you see on the screen, right? So we will use dialog boxes to take input into the program. So in the first dialog box, you will insert an operator like addition or subtraction, and then you will click OK. In the second dialog box, you will provide number one or operand one and in the third dialog box you will provide number two and you will see the result directly in the document right now i have some sort of data control in the application let's say if you don't provide any number and leave this text box empty and press ok and here you provide any number then an alert message is shown and it says wrong data refresh page and provide data again so you have to refresh the page to run the application again right so it's a simple application but if we give you more understanding of the concepts we have covered so far you will actually learn how do we apply concepts and develop something so let's now jump into the code and start developing this application now the first step should always be read data into the program so i will write some code first and then i will describe it So I created three input dialog boxes using prompt method here, here, and here. Now, if you run the program at this moment, this input box will come first, and then you will see this one, and in the last, this one comes up, right? So they will show themselves in the same order you have them in the code. Now, prompt method is for input. And when you provide input in the box, it will be returned by the method. So the prompt method has a return value. And when a method has a return value, we need to take care of it. And this is what we are doing here. We are taking care of the return values and assigning them to these variables. And now here you see I am using constant instead of let variables. And you know constant variables are immutable. And once they are initialized in the program, they can't be reinitialized. So using constant, I secure the input that coming in the figram. So the constant variables is the right choice. I will go for it, not for let variables, right? Now in our tutorial number 14, you learned number conversions and you know how to convert a string representation of a number to a real number using functions like pairs int and pairs float. And here you will see a practical example of number conversions the data on the web exists always as string so if you're reading data in the program from the web then your data is always in the form of a string right so this prompt method gets data from the web and gives it back to the program so the data coming in the program is in a string form let's say in the prompt input box you provide 10 and when it comes into the program it is changed into a string so at this moment our variables number one and number two will get the string representation of numbers not the actual numbers and that means we need to convert string representation of numbers to the real numbers and that's why we need to do number conversion here and here so let's do that
So now we are good. Data will be converted from the string to the floating point numbers before it is placed into the variables. Now look at the source of errors in the program. I see three different cases. Number one is using can provide input that can't be converted into the floating point numbers like RBC. Right? And number two is user can press the OK button without providing any data. So in this case, prompt method will return an empty string. And number three is the input dialog box has a cancel button. And when the cancel button is pressed, the prompt method will return a null value. So in all the three cases, pairs float won't succeed in the conversion. And what you know, when pairs float fails in the conversion, it returns a special value which is NAN. Right? NAN means not a number and it indicates conversion process went wrong. Now I will put some more code in the program and perform data validation. And we need also a variable to hold the result. Right? Now I will write if statement to perform validation. So you are familiar with isNAN function, right? We discussed isNAN in our tutorial number 14 and it is used to determine if the value is number or not a number. So if the value is not a number, this function will return true. And in the if statement, we are using logical R. And that means if either this one becomes true or this one becomes true, the entire if statement is true. And when if a statement is true, you will see this alert message, right? So let's now run this program and check if data control is working or not. So let's provide wrong data. And here you see wrong input. Refresh the page again and provide data, right? And you can check by yourself for empty string and null value. I hope it will work. Now, if our variable holding numbers, we will rather come inside the else block and here we are going to program our calculator and we will just write a series of if else if statements to let our program decide what operation to perform that's it so let's do that And finally, we will put the result in the document. Now our simple calculator application is ready. And you see we have applied many concepts in this application. We have covered in previous tutorials. For example, the const variable, pass float function, is none function, a string concatenation here and this is the first time i am using document.write method but i told you in our very first tutorial that we would use it to print the result right now you can run the program and check it by yourself i hope it will work and don't forget to tell me if this tutorial was helpful or not you can leave comments under this video i will see you in the next tutorial and thanks for watching